So it's generally accepted that culture, in particular the cultural capital of every country, is directly connected with sustainable development. That is because through the improvement of the quality of life, the cultural resources contribute decisively to the creation and establishment of a general climate that is favorable to growth. During the last decade, the concept of economic sustainability has developed wider anthropological and anthropocentric parameters, which until recently were overlooked by traditional economic thought. That this is also reflected in all recent reports of international organizations such as the UNESCO, the OECD, and the Council of Europe that fully recognize the socio-economic value of cultural heritage. Cultural heritage stands at the core of reflections on sustainable economic development. The rising importance of cultural heritage, both tangible and intangible, stems from its place in local, regional, and national economies, and especially from the turnover of construction, real estate, and tourism sectors, and their respective contribution to job creation and growth. It is also related to the overall externalities and spillover effects caused by the expanding cultural and creative sectors in Europe, which equally embraces the new digital economy. Now, as far as Greece is concerned, the undeniably rich and exceptional cultural heritage, the monuments, the archaeological sites, the museum, and the cultural landscape in general are among the fundamental resources upon which the country's efforts to regain its prior from financial and social stature and achieve future sustainable developments are based. The constant care and concern of the Greek state for the protection, preservation and further enrichment of these cultural assets led the Ministry of Culture and Sports to devise and set in motion a long-term and multi-level program of investment on culture that relies on the best possible use of the financial tools and opportunities provided by the U European Union structural funds. Cultural heritage is extremely powerful, a factor of strategic and critical importance to the progress and development of the country. It is also a field where Greece can excel on a global scale as a key player. In 2000 and 2014 period, in between these two periods, the Greek state implemented through the Ministry of Culture with uh, European funds more than 1,300 culture projects, uh, uh, projects all over Greece with a total budget of over two. 0.1 billion euros. Should one have about 900 million euros spent on archaeological excavations and investigations conducted in the course of major infrastructure projects such as the Egnatia Highway in Epirus and Macedonia, as well as in Athens and Thessaloniki, metropolitan railways. The total amount is truly extraordinary, especially by Greek standards. The projects planned and completed concern, one, the preservation, restoration, and enhancement of the extremely wealthy cultural heritage of the country, two, the construction of new museum buildings, the expansion and improvement of existing ones, the addition of new exhibitions, and modernization of the old. Three, the establishment and operation of basic infrastructure structures to serve contemporary cultural activities. And four, the development of digital tools for the promotion of the history and cultural heritage of Greece. Interventions were dedicated, I'm oh, sorry, were dictated primarily by the vital needs of the monument themselves. The wishes of the local communities were also seriously considered as well as each project's potential for the development of the surrounding area and the broader region. 
available resources were utilized to serve the needs and boost growth of the Tulipids in every part of the country. This planning was based on two key principles. A. Culture is a social and public good. And B. Culture is a constituent of growth. It is one of the fourth pillars of sustainable development. In fact, its main cohesive element, the one that brings and keeps the other three, environmental, social, and economic growth together. Culture's catalytic contribution comes through the improvement of the quality of life and the consolidation of a positive attitude and atmosphere that encourages progress and growth. Culture creates the necessary conditions for good physical and social health, meaningful education, sustainable urban, local and regional development, by producing essential and tangible benefits. According to comprehensive studies and statistical data, the impact of the investment of 1 million euros in cultural infrastructure yields, within a five-year period, 3.44 million euros of overall economic growth in the area. The original investment is more than tripled. Culture is a major development tool which has a lot to offer, especially in regional growth. Individual sites and wider areas are truly reformed and regenerated around the axis of a diachronic cultural creation through the aesthetic quality of material goods and services that constitute the broader cultural capital. Cultural property contributes not only to symbolic va values, but to the real growth values as well, that is, to actual economy. In the vicinity of archaeological sites and monuments, important economic activities are born and flourish. This sets a new perspective in our dealing with cultural goods and the adoption of a sustainable development model based on the holistic and balanced management of the natural and cultural environment. Over the last years, Greece has been facing an unprecedented financial, economic, and social crisis. The ever-deepening recession must be countered through new, powerful, and dynamic development initiatives. It is becoming apparent that the potential contribution of culture in synergy with other dynamic se sectors, such as tourism, to the country's economic recovery and growth can prove catalytic. It is generally agreed that even through tourism, even though tourism is a fragile sector, usually the first to suffer in times of unrest, it is also among those that can rapidly contribute to economic recovery. In Greece, tourism consistently contributes more than 15% of the gross domestic product and makes up for almost a third of the trade deficit. Tourism also brings in much needed income to the local and regional economy, generates growth and fosters employment and job creation. Recent data seem to justify these decisions. After the 2006 to 2010 decline, Museum visitations and revenue statistics for 2011 display considerable increase by 17.5% and 3.9% respectively. In May 2012, museum visitations was up by a further 12.3%. Site visitation by 25.5% and revenue by 13.2%. The establishment of new and the promotion of existing cultural goals can produce primarily diversification and enrichment of tourism product through the specialized and alternative forms of tourism, such as cultural tourism. Secondly, the mitigation of the seasonality of tourism. Third, the decentralization of development and the moderation of spatial concentration. Four, 
the gen regeneration of the urban fabric, and five, job creation. Nineteen centuries have passed since, since Pausanias, the, uh, the famous 20th century before Christ traveler and geographer, who wrote ten books on his itineraries in Greece, became the first in a long series of renowned practical tourists that visited the land through the centuries. Since then, many things have obviously changed. However, the fundamental elements of the Greek landscape, including all those that today we refer to as classical heritage, remain present and constitute a paramount cultural resource. The desire for distinct cultural experiences, the appreciation of beauty, and the quest for knowledge still distinguish cultural tourists from near sun and sea seekers. Cultural tourism is in its own right an important policy of great potential, presenting unique development opportunities and prospects. In Greece, as everywhere else in that matter, overall qualities, improvement, and the diversification of the tourism product are the main desiderata. Recent research in this field has shown that regions characterized by natural and cultural wealth, that is, an appealing environment and landscape, interesting heritage sites, modern and innovative museums, abundance of contemporary cultural events and activities, constitute considerably more attractive and dynamic and tourist destinations. Intervention in the cultural sector, sector thus improve the country's attractiveness to various investment initiatives. Investors benefit from the existence of significant economic uh, externalities, which rely precisely on the existence and effective utilization of cultural deposits. In areas with developmental <coughs> handicaps and evident impediments and weaknesses in the main sectors of economic activity, cultural projects contribute immensely to the remedy of peripheral inequalities. <coughs> the protection, conservation, and overall, overall enhancement of cultural heritage assets can truly help balance out other deficiencies and achieve growth that can withstand present and future challenges and remain viable, not just economically, but also socially and environment environmentally. Within this context of fundamental principles and assumptions, our strategy and consequent project policy targeted. One, the advancement of cultural poles in established tourist destinations of major significance with emphasis laid not only on the archaeological sites themselves, but also on the featuring of individual satellite monuments, as well as on the regeneration and upgrade of urban centers in close proximity to the main pole. Two, the strengthening and further development of new and emerging tourist destinations. Three, the upgrade and overall improvement of public space in urban centers and the emergence of new cultural homes in order to develop civic tourism. Four, the promotion of important sites and monuments in mountainous or remote areas with the aim of developing specialized types of tourism, such as religious tourism. Five, the establishment and networking of major homes and on specific cultural groups. More specifically, further development of major already <coughs> established cultural ports. These are major tourist attraction ports of international renown, including World Heritage Monuments with premium cultural and tourist labels such as Olympia, Epidavros, Rose, Knossos, Aia Vergia. Interventions there comprise integrated conservation programs, improvement of services, and the development of site and tourist management plans. The aim is to give new life to major landmarks, 
improve their integrity and enhance their authenticity in accordance with established principles of conservation and management of monuments and archaeological and historical sites. Two, support for emerging new cultural goals, especially in conjunction with the construction of new highways. Characteristic is the example of the Gnatia Roadway, partially constructed on top and along the Roman Via Ignatia, which is now gradually being transformed into a cultural route that connects several Hellenistic towns of Macedonia, such as Philippi, Regina, Aea, Trela, Bion, etc., crossing the whole of northern Greece from east to west. Another motorway leading from the Albanian frontier to southern Peloponnese, the so-called Ionian motorway, also connects important sites and monuments such as Vodora, Nicopolis, and Olympia. The aim here is to create new cultural destinations by exploiting recent archaeological discoveries to create new sites and associate them to pre-existing cultural itineraries, wine routes, olive routes, in regions that are still non-mature destinations, but show high touristic potential. Three, improvement of city tourism infrastructures. This objective entails the creation of recognizable brand names for cities and the implementation of major urban rehabilitation programs, primarily in Athens and Thessaloniki, but also in Heraklion, on Crete, the old city of Corfu, the city of Larissa in central Greece, etc. During the past decade, the unification of the archaeological site of Athens, the completion of the new Acropolis Museum, as well as the construction of a new concert hall, for a while created a promising momentum. Unfortunately, this came to a halt because of the ensuing financial recession. To address the problem, a program for infrastructure expansion was decided. The archaeological site unification pro project was extended to include more areas of historic Athens, the recently discovered site of Lycion, the site of Aristotle's philosophical school was developed, and projects for the refurbishment of the National Gallery and the creation of the new National Museum for Modern Art also, are also underway. Furthermore, a public-private sector partnership with the Neapolis Foundation resulted in a project for the creation of a grand cultural center comprising a new opera house and National Library designed by Renzo Piano. This project is part of the general upgrade of Athenian coastline. It goes without saying that all the above mentioned interventions are under, not addressed merely to tourists, but aim profoundly at improving the lives of the city's inhabitants as well. Besides, it's impossible to perceive a successful cultural tourism project which is completely irrelevant to or ignorant of the social and economic circumstances and needs of the local population. Four, that's right. Development of the islands, mountainous and other remote areas by creating local and regional poles and connecting them through a carefully designed network of cultural itineraries. The interventions aim at the socio-economic development of these areas. Statistics show that in the last 40 years, touristically developed areas of Greece have significantly increased their population and preserved their social fabric while less developed ones suffered from unemployment and migration. Conservation works on the prehistoric citadel of Ayos Andreas in the island of Sifnos on the ancient settlement of Skarkos in Eos, on the monastery of uh, St. John the Baptist in the deep ravine of Mount Menicchio in Ceres, dated in the 13th century, on the cathedral of Umenica in Kilkis, dedicated to St. George 
dated in the 19th century are characteristic examples of successive, successful projects. In the case of Greece, the establishment of cultural roots is the most suitable way to showcase places, sites, and monuments in their spatial and temporal relation. At the same time, the dialogue and planning required to create a cultural road with cooperation on the interdisciplinary scientific level, as well as on the level of local stakeholders and entire se sectors of the economy, shows the way to a new kind of cultural entrepreneurship closely linked with the cultural reserve. Under the economy of experience, cultural roots can fill old wine scales with new wine, give new meanings and interpretation to familiar monuments, rescue and promote aspects of intangible heritage, network sites and people, produce jobs for creative people and opportunities for innovative SMEs in the broader culture and creative sectors, including tourism and astronomy. In the long run, they set a broader and stronger foundation for sustainable development. And in doing so, they are directly linked with the biggest stake of our time, the bonding of culture with viable environmental, economic, and social growth. Growth, which is a strategic objective of the European Union for Europe 2020. To sum up, we have been developing a decentralized planning model which is based on the diffusion of infrastructures and activities and their interconnection to a system of networks. Museums play a key role in our planning, despite the fact that according to statistic visitors, that to statistic visitors, uh, to statistics, I'm sorry, visitors prefer open-air archaeological and historical sites at 2.1 ratio. This planning applies mainly to the 2006 state museums and private museums currently under official accreditation procedure. Within the framework of strategic planning, our museum policies aim, of course, to attract more tourists, but also to provide education and entertainment to the local communities. As part of the quality upgrade, we are applying modern ideas, standards, and methods to the organization and operation of museums and exhibitions by combining historical accuracy with stimulating presentation, cutting-edge information technologies, pleasing environment, and attractive amenities. Having bared for many years the responsibility for the implementation of government cultural policies in the country, a responsibility corresponding to the significance and extent of the cultural wealth of Greece, I could not but totally agree with the opinion expressed by two contemporary theorists of the economy of culture, Sharon Janot and, I'm sorry, Sharon Janot and Nick Stanley. As we strive to preserve our culture and share it with others, we do not express just who we are, but also how we live with our fellow men. Therefore, by promoting our culture and cultural heritage, we maintain a strategic resource as important as a nuclear arsenal or a noise field. Thank you.